Okay, let's recap what happened in Hungary since 1989 when the one-party system ended. First of all, the country was renamed from People's Republic of Hungary to Republic of Hungary and then later on, some 20 years later, it became Hungary. Well, technically it became Magyarország, but people know it as Hungary and they removed the Republic from the name. That created some uproar from people who feared that democracy ended, but whoever I talk to in Hungary, they don't really feel that the democracy part ended, but people seem to let the government do whatever they want. And I don't mean this government I mean all the government in the history of Hungary. That's the kind of thing people do. In 1990, there were general elections and a party called MDF won. The name MDF means the Forum of Hungarian Democrats. It consisted of lots of people. Then, since they gathered a two-thirds majority, everybody thought that they will make things right. Restore democracy, uplift the country from the sort of economic disarray that socialism caused and lead us to the promised land. Now, of course, you, my friend, who probably has experienced democracy for a couple of years, you surely know that that's never the case. There are no sudden changes there is no promised land, there is nothing like that. But then again, when the system changed, most people thought that it would bring heaven down to Hungary. But then, of course, I think it's not a big surprise if I say that MDF failed. And then, after four years, there were general elections again, and a party called MSP, S with an S and a Z, so MSZP, technically, but... You probably have watched my channel for a bit and I think if you look up a couple of Hungarian videos in some of them I explain that the S and Z makes an S sound in Hungarian and the single S makes a SH sound. Moving on. MSP1. MSP is short for Hungarian Socialist Party. And you might think that, oh my god, the rats came back! But not really, no. Because the socialism before 1989 and the Socialist Party in 1994, that was, that was, that was a bit different. Uh, in Hungarian, they have a slightly different name, a twist on the word socialist. But anyways, socialist actually meant in their name that they were very sensitive to society and, 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 and wanted to help people. I'm not saying they did, but they wanted to, at least based on the name. So no promised land anymore, no two-thirds majority, but they teamed up with another party called SDS, again with the S and the Z, which is short for the Alliance of Free Democrats. So we have MSP, SDS, MDF, it's still kicking, the Farmers Party, MIEP, actually pronounced MIEP, and a couple of smaller parties. Now, please mind that I'm doing this from memory and I intend this video to be more of an impression of what happened than strict historical facts. And I know that there are plenty of really smart people out there, Hungarians and non-Hungarians, who can correct me in the comment section, so please talk amongst yourselves. Right, so, four years of stuff, and then another four years with MSP and SDS, and, and then a party called Fides, which stands for Alliance of Young Democrats. As you can see, Hungarians love the, the word Democrat in things. So Fides emerged and promised the people that since nothing is going really well, they have a plan to make it better. And they did have a plan. Most of these parties actually had a written plan in those good old days. And then MSP had to introduce restrictions, economical restrictions and additional taxes and all that, because Hungary wasn't 
in a very good place. And then in 1998, when again there were general elections, Fidesz won. Now, they did start making a difference, kind of, built some hospitals, did some things, and somehow they created this image in lots of Hungarians' mind that they openly steal. Now, I'm not going to discuss whether they stole or how much or whatever. You know that in a democracy, everybody's corrupt, basically, more or less. So I'm not going there. I leave that to people who are much more knowledgeable. But they did create this impression, and a lot of people I talked to either denied this and thought that Fidesz brought prosperity to the country. And the other half said that, no, no, they didn't do anything special. They didn't actually ruin everything, but they didn't do anything special. But somehow they stole money. They created these schemes more openly than previous politicians. And that left a lot of people disillusioned. And then, after four years, you guessed right, general elections, and they lost. The leader of the party, Orban Viktor, who you might have heard of, he allegedly went to Vienna for psychological treatments or psychiatric treatments. Rumor says that because he couldn't handle the loss. And I'm not trying to bash him, but it was really a surprising defeat. And people brought back MSP, but almost on its own. And lots of other parties, like MIE or KDNP or the Farmers Party, they kind of disappear. And this whole political playground now consists of Fidesz and MSP. It's a two-party system with some tiny smaller parties scattered around with one or two, four seats, etc. And I guess, in retrospect, People wanted to try that out, subconsciously maybe, but this separated the country. There was the MSP side and then there was the Fidesz side and of course they both hated each other and they both thought the other party is a liar and a fraud and they ruined the country and Fidesz losing the next elections in another four years, and around that time Hungary joined the European Union, and people thought that that would again bring us prosperity, and lots of people, although I'm not sure about the numbers, but at least some people thought that opening up to the EU completely would make us closer to Euro, because politicians and business people would have to try to somehow adapt to the new situation. But later on it turned out that this didn't really happen. And again, that left some people quite disillusioned in the whole European Union, because they thought that the European Union was weak. But then again, on the other side, if the European Union had been strong and more dictatorial, lots of other people would have shouted dictatorship and oppression. So you, I guess you get the point. Nothing is black and white. Right, so Fidesz losing again. They got more and more aggressive because they wanted power more and more. And MSP slowly declined, not just because there was nothing they could do for the country, well, because again, like most parties, they stole money and had scandals and whatever. And also, most importantly, they had some inner fightings between prominent people of the party and they paid less attention to Fidesz and the voters and then suddenly in the next election Fidesz won with a two-thirds majority copying MDF in the beginning. And they created a new constitution, renamed the country, did lots and lots of changes, but still they didn't seem to understand the tiny intricacies of, of politics because lots and lots of people thought again that they still too openly they had lots of scandals regarding European Union money and I don't want to go into details but then again if you think about it every single government I talked about had loads of scandals so I tend not to differentiate between them just think of them as the government. 
Regardless of what they did, they won again, but they, if I remember correctly, lost the two-thirds majority, and some new parties emerged. MSP slowly faded away, became a much smaller party. New ones like Jobbik, um, LMP, which is more or, more or less a Green Party, a very liberal, liberal Green Party, and then lots of other small parties emerged. And here we are, we'll have general elections soon. So I hope all of that made sense, and I guess my only point here is that, as I see, because of the lots of smaller parties, a medium-sized MSP, a medium-sized Jobbik, a small LMP, uh, and lots of other kind of small or micro parties, try to persuade people to go and vote. They don't seem to care which of the parties people vote, not even Fides. They want to persuade people to take part in democracy, because usually voter turnouts are fairly low. Right now, and I might be wrong with the numbers, but there are 4 million people eligible to vote in this election, and Fidesz has about 1 million that supports him. So a lot of people think that if the other three stands up, goes voting, then this could be a very interesting election indeed. It will be interesting to see how many people will vote this time and will we have again a multi-party parliament with coalitions? Because Hungary hasn't had a proper coalition in about 16 years. So that's where we are at the moment. If something didn't make sense, you're absolutely welcome to ask any questions in the comment section. And as usual, you can say anything there. But if I could have a request, I would ask you to try to stay polite and try to stick to the amazement of political systems and what could go on rather than defending one or two of these parties. Because I do not intent to bash or support any of that. So I hope that made sense. Thank you for watching and see you later.